Hey everybody, welcome! Welcome back! Yeah, this is the Reboot Review. I am Robin. And I am Katie. I actually remembered to say our names right off the top this time. And I wanted so badly to make a joke about names, but I figured we played that out last time. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> now that all our name jokes are done, we just have to remember to say it normally off the top now. Yes. Um, so anyway, yeah, today's episode is episode 6, The yes. Belly of the Beast. Everyone's favorite episode. Everyone's favorite. I, I wonder if the feeling about this episode is as universal as it is unanimous for the two of us. A great big meh yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah. This is, um, I was thinking about it, and I would I would probably put this in my bottom five Ooh. of reboot episodes um, overall. But, like, I don't know. I would say my bottom five kind of, like, spreads a pretty wide area of the whole series. Yeah, Yeah. I would say most of my bottom five is in season four. Yeah, I think that would be the consensus among most people, but especially if you, like, accept season four for being its own thing. Yeah. um, In the Belly of the Beast would definitely be in my bottom five. Yeah, and it's hard to think, like, like, in the first few seasons, there are very few actual full episodes where it's just like, eh. Yeah, but what's know. what's funny though is I will say also that one of like one of the episodes that I would consider the weakest episodes, uh, like among the weakest episodes, is actually a season three episode. Ooh. For as much as we unanimously sort of love season three as reboot fans, um, there's going back and rewatching it. Uh, there was one episode where I was like, "This episode's kind of a hot mess," Ooh. Um, and I, I don't know. I kind of want to keep you in suspense. To find out which one it is. It's true. I see. I haven't seen nearly as many. I rewatched, I guess, season three as like I all of season one and two. I've seen a a billion times years ago. Yeah. But season three, I I can't pinpoint certain episodes. Yeah. Also, because season three is so based on story arcs, it all just kind of. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I guess like one thing I will say quickly about like a summary of why this episode is maybe one of the weaker episodes is uh they don't do a very good job with stakes <laughs> like if i was like a story editor going just... into this oh yeah like the the this um stakes as far as what is at stake yeah which i guess is you write that like vampire stakes not like hamburger stakes <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking about food i guess i'm hungry yeah, yeah that could be but I gotta um, go get uh, get me some some slow food <laughs> <laughs> right that's the best best solution to hunger is having to wait an hour for your meal. But um, yeah, so uh, with this episode for me, a, a big part of it is um, is the lack of stakes. That's watching it as an adult. Um, but I think a big part of it, because even as a kid, I didn't like this episode. And I think it's just, um, even for 11 or 12 year old me, it was a really juvenile episode. Yeah, especially when they've had so many episodes that were not juvenile. Like, yeah. It, it and I mean it's Enzo centric. Yeah, so if you didn't like Enzo, which again, nobody he does. himself, <laughs> he himself always was this like almost excessively juvenile character in their effort to write a kid into the show. Yeah, and so the episode just feels like it plays really young. And my big big qualm with it is that you never feel like Enzo's in any real danger. Yeah, because no. even though he's in a dangerous situation. We'll see how it plays out. You know um, what, though? I just had the most amazing realization. You know, it, it, Enzo is exactly what a group of older guys, not older, oldish guys, would imagine a, a little annoying kid would be like. Yeah. Especially when you read more about the original, like, the, like the creative team. Like, they all were these really cool, techno-savvy guys. Yeah. And I imagine they thought all nine-year-olds were just these really obnoxious little people <laughs> like, yeah. who would say Hyperactive. like crazy okay. words and like... Yeah, come up with like all this weird slang. Like this... These kids and their that, words these I think days. That, honestly, <laughs> it's all those words those kids say. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. I think that's it. Like, he doesn't come across as real that's or believable really or relatable yeah. because he's what they imagine a child is supposed to be like. Yeah, and it's like these these creatives wanted to make a show for themselves. Yes. And when they were told they had to make a show for kids, I mean, I think they always knew they were making a show for kids, but I think every adult creator secretly is, if even if you're producing for kids, you're making something you would want to watch. Yes, exactly. And um, so you, you do get the impression that Enzo kind of harshed their mellow, especially at first. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think he was just treated as this like annoying. And I think when you are a kid, especially an older kid, it's very transparent. Exactly. That exactly. you're like the kids aren't. Like He's a that. kid I wouldn't want to hang out with when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So speaking of which, should we start Belly of the Beast? Okay, now yeah, we've complained okay. about it enough. Yeah, yeah. And and again, like every episode, there there are redeeming things and cute things. And I can think of at least one moment in this episode that I really like, yeah. which and I'll I be happy to point out to you. And I did fall in love with the older Enzo, so I mean, like... I yeah, so you can't complain that much. Systems, people, <laughs> yeah. cities, oh, so one thing place. about... Because I remember in like, the first friend. episode, we talk about how they kind one of came up with Bob's character guardian. design. Mm-hmm. And what's funny and is, like, in this art book my that we have, friends, and you see the original art by and dreams, uh, Bren- to Brendan them McCarthy, from yes, their Brendan McCarthy, who um, basically was probably one of the key drivers of the overall look of Reboot. Um, yeah, he was, sounded he was, like he, he was, was the guy. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, when you see his original sketches for Bob, it's clear that um, Bob's hair, that's its dreads. Yes. Yeah. That's right. And that was kind of what they were trying to convey. Computer dreads. And what I find really interesting is that... Um, it's like Udon noodles. Yeah. <laughs> udon dreads. Throw Udon dreads. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. <laughs> but, but no, um, what's really and interesting is looking at the original pleasure. designs, I feel like no Bob was kind of meant sure. to be black-coated. But I intend to yeah, find out. Yeah, I actually... He, he was clearly supposed really? to be black I definitely got that impression <laughs> yeah. when looking at the original designs, too. Yeah, there's yeah. something very... Like, in his design that does... Like now, like, uh, like the same with Dot. Like, yeah, the cool it, it edginess awesome. of the original designs kind of get a little uh, lost in translation. Yeah, to the, yeah, the rendering. And in the end, I mean, especially hiring a, a voice actor who s- speaks very white. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very Zach Morris. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, they completely abandoned that as a concept. Um, and as someone who nowadays really likes to see representation in media, it's a big, it's a big topic now. And I pretty much support it 100% of the time, just to clear. And um, I, I sort of feel like that was a missed opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Not having Bob the black guy. It is, well, and I guess that's the thing is, even back in 90. Oh, and if I like it probably would have been a risky choice. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, probably no, maybe no, risky for a bunch of white here. British creators to do as well. To be fair. Oh, because the Enzo yeah. problem yeah. also yeah. could have oh, happened. Well, but this I mean also what I imagine in, in an African American person is like what was the <laughs> primary mainstream black media in nineteen ninety four? It was Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. So you would have probably gotten something that felt very much like it was derived from the Will Smith Fresh Prince. Although Bob does kind of channel him. He He does, yeah. And maybe that was something that originally came out of that vision core. Or maybe they gave a description to Ben McCarthy, and his first thought was to picture like a half and black dude. That early 90s stereotype, right? Maybe that's... Dishonesty. yeah, again, like you said, missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the episode started. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we're old man Pearson's dad with them. Uh, clearly named for Ian Pearson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're big on their homages in the show and putting yeah. their names in there. Yeah, yeah. The one thing, though, is, I mean, I love the introduction to Old Man Pearson because, of yes. course, he becomes pretty boss yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's always kind of awesome. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, yeah, just the levels of awesome which he achieves. And it's funny because that, that evolution of his character, the Codemaster stuff, is something I always forget. I know, yes. Oh, I, it's funny for me, thinking back on it, I always imagine his evolution happens in like season three because that's when all these cool things happen yeah. and it's, it's it's like no we actually got backstory for old man pearson in like the halcyon days of, oh i guess halcyon is not the word i'm looking for but like in these innocent days of season two yeah you know <laughs> Not dead. Fully yeah, right. <laughs> just just broken this irreparably. <laughs> Bring it to me. Oh yeah, there's a lot of hack and slash in this episode. <laughs> I mean, I like hack and slash. I guess I, I shouldn't say it like that, but um, it just kind of lends to the immature feeling of the episode because you're basically pairing all your most immature characters. Yeah, Megabyte has to put up with them for an entire episode. Who's that? I know garbage like you belongs in the dump, but why don't you quit bugging old man Pearson? Bob? It's Bob. Sounds good. Possibly Bob. 
I feel like they're just hands flailing inside. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, time to that's pretty effective. Hope they're insured. Like, even Bob's jokes feel especially corny in this episode to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah so far. So far I think not. maybe oh, I, I, I need to look at the writer of this episode. I mean, I guess we'll have to like, punish them. Yeah, I guess I don't want to call them out because it might just be like that was their style of writing. They might have been a fairly new writer at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Might have just been getting started, or, they, or maybe, you know, they kids' stuff was not their usual wheelhouse, and they're really great at writing procedurals, but they took this because it was a job. Like, there's all kinds of reasons why a writer might make a subpar episode, so. Yeah, exactly. You know, they just need to fill it up. I told you, not touch me there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Consent <laughs> issue here? Hey, don't touch that! Frisket does what Frisket wants. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, Frisket's go around doing anything he wants thing always kind of irked me as well. Yeah. I don't know why that gets on my nerves because I mean he's just a dog, but it was the whole like you know the, the dog being smarter than the people uh -huh. trope. Yeah. I, I guess was just. So how's that? You're not getting any medals till you cut and paste me out of this, lad. <laughs> you tell him, old man Pearson. <laughs> he did deserve that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. An extraordinary performance, gentlemen. Not only did you let Bob make fools of us all, but do oh, they I managed to get like a mod with frisket to put up on their view screen. Yeah. What kind of resources do these guys have? <laughs> well, he's a virus. Yeah, Sorry, that's true, actually. We'll get the dog now. Yes, we will. Right away. Oh, no, no. My way is so much easier. Which way? Is that? Enzo. Enzo. Get me the boy. I feel like we can't do that right now. But you can't right, guess they're, they're a little indisposed. <laughs> We can make better uh, jokes for this episode. Pas right? moindre idée. That's a fanfiction we should a write. A rewrite of In the Belly of the Beast. There we go! <laughs> you what should have happened? Right, yeah. Well, that explains the rumor that you turned Hack and Slash into scrap over at the dump. Yeah, just giving Megabyte's goons a little incentive to leave old man Pearson alone. <gasps> okay, we're coming up to the moment that I actually really like in this episode, which is not for good farting. Sorry, but you have no reservation. Go on, shoot, dépêchez vous. Cecil, there's something wrong with him. He never comes inside. Go ahead, he won't bite. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure he bites. <laughs> that seems to be made very clear to me. This, this, I love this. Yeah, I, I always loved his little the engine. Implication. He's got a little engine inside, and you can press it, and he's like, "Oh, this no. is the part right here." And I loved that you reach, you could reach into the roof of his mouth. Yeah, to pop it, pop it up. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What's that is that's a my very, very good favorite part. thing about this whole episode, and it's not just like a. Yeah, there, there we go. Goes. Something <laughs> Really? What um, was your first clue, Doctor? It's not just like an okay Lynch, moment in still. an episode I otherwise don't much care for. It's just generally great. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And I like it too. Like, he's got a little engine. It doesn't make sense. No, probably not. To. But yeah, yeah. we're inside of a computer. It's just Maybe that's so just fun. Run. Yeah. Yeah. Glitch. Which again really seemed like the creativity of Brendan McCarthy at work. Because yes. he was just, if you look at his illustrations in this book, it's, it's called The Art of Reboot, and it's simply published we'll by just have to hope um, Mainframe can, uh, and I think some independent thing. public um, comic this publishers. Is a fine dining like, um, I'm looking at the cover here of Canada, Beach yeah, Studios on, boy, and DMS. We don't know how many of these studios are still when you're operating. Um, but yeah, Brendan McCarthy, this like lead designer, would Where just come you? to them with this crazy stuff. And there's a ton of things they, they, they didn't use, but uh, there's Frisket. a lot of stuff that Go they were like, yeah, this is her wacky thing. thing. Let's make it. Yeah, or just like, let's find a way to make it fit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he like they were saying he's really the one responsible for so much of this, like yeah. almost chrome, fifties chrome style. Yeah, yeah. Every, well, everything. Yeah, and it's actually it's making me appreciate the design of mainframe itself a little bit more. Yeah, and that they had to build a pretty hey, detailed overall place. Yeah, for them to be in. What's right? wrong, Philip? You 
It has to feel like a bustling city. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah it had to have it had to have some unity. Yeah. I and mean, I, I guess I don't want to completely assume that the frisket engine thing was Brendan McCarthy. Uh, I don't want to take that away from any designer yeah, who right. did Someone's come up with that. Right. Someone's listening to this and going, "Hey, now well, that was me." Yeah. Um, but uh, but it just kind of shows that their attitude on the show was uh, a designer or someone could bring them something quirky and weird like that, and they'd be like, "We love it. Let's integrate it." Yeah. yeah. Again, the reminder that Frisket is not Enzo's dog. It's something they only allude to every so often, but in case you missed it, it's establishing that Frisket does not belong to Enzo. Yeah, he's just he's, he's just a buddy. dog who follows him around. Yeah. yeah, decided he liked him one day. It's, nobody Probably. else does. Frisket, <laughs> <laughs> we need somebody. <laughs> Do hurry. We have to get that command out of well, him before it deteriorates any further. hard to get further. along with, too. So. Yeah, that's true. Maybe there's a story <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, let him go! I'll erase Maybe every last one of you if you hurt him! Aw, no, that's the episode we should have seen. Uh, I know, that's... that's this, really, this Shut one could have been way more about the bond between Enzo and Frisket. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, the tip gave it. us the relationship between Bob and Dot. This yeah. would have been the perfect follow-up. This is all you'll ever get, Enzo. Yeah. Until you become older and more and attractive. <laughs> really muscly. Um, but uh, something happens to your eye. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool. It. We, we probably it's cool. Enzo and uh, Yeah. But yeah, Worry like, uh, and I feel like maybe that kind of was what they were going for with this episode, but it just ended up way too superficial. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, like so many like back and forth shots too. It's just kind of where nothing is really happening yeah. and. Oh, but this is our first introduction to... Where is he? I recognize that music. Wait, I think it's our first introduction. But the creepy music, isn't this Air Doctor? This episode, or maybe not, I don't remember. Maybe, okay, we're gonna see if Air Doctor is, makes his first appearance. Yes! Oh, yeah, because yeah, there's... Um, be sorry you ever met oh, I forget what his assistant's name is. It's not I Igor. So. I mean, it might be Igor. Probably Igor. Or some... Computery version. <laughs> Igor. Oh, the smarmy Enzo face there for your approval. Igor. Yeah, I guess in Igor. I know it's too early for that, but we could call him Igor. Igor, yeah, for now, until we've gotten confirmation. Let's try not to talk over it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> exactly. We missed so many good moments. I know. Because we're so busy talking. But you like it, right, audience? Yeah, I We're mean, talking. you can you can go back and rewatch this episode and see the good moments as many times as you like. Oh, and then if we miss something, I like to write it. What are they comments. doing to him? Yeah, that's pretty awful, actually. I think it's like Applebaum or something. We must move he definitely more. does not like the green glowy light. No, it's the two. <laughs> oh man, gotta love. Megabyte wants something right, gotta do it yourself mode. That's it. He's yeah. pulsating, Igor is. <laughs> it's like it's shoulder. Oh, yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember that. I, I vaguely remember it. He's Air Doctor, whether or not he talks. Oh, he should. I can't imagine it happening here not talking. Ah, contentious to the last. <laughs> when that Very muzzle. admirable. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Maybe that's what the green lights now. were for. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like muzzle 3D printing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but they're no, yeah, no, he's, there. yes. Okay, with that sound, that is legitimately, like, frightening. Yeah. No, no! This was a lot of people are triggered by, like, dentist girl sounds. This. It's he true. He his purpose. Dump him at the city limits. Can't I at least say goodbye? That was the most dangerous well, thing you could have done. No. Oh, Megabyte. Stop! That was a Kids. smart move. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Good you'll move. find something else. I love it when, with. like, characters in shows act like people and not yeah. characters. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. this would be the reasonable thing to do in your situation. Hurry, the signal is growing weak. So one thing I've forgotten is that um, I always was like, yeah, Hacks, Scott yes. McNeil, who is an extremely prolific voice actor, who 
Buzz yeah. fans doing the con circuit, and who, if you've ever been to a con in Canada, you've probably met him. Must I and, do um, everything myself? He's a cool, fun guy. Um, so I was like, yeah, he plays Hack. Um, he doesn't play Hack until the episode Gigabyte. Really? Yes, this is actually... Let me see. I got it a second ago. Uh, Philip Maurice Hayes. Philip, what happened? Uh, I'm, he maybe got another job. I'm guessing Phil, that was it. Yeah. Phil. <laughs> What were you thinking? After them. Or maybe he really liked Scott McNeil and was like, hey, you know what? I like you so much. You're I'm better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Please take my paying job. You're right. I'm do sure it. actors do that all the time. That's, they're very selfless people, yeah. actors. <laughs> they're really generous. Yeah. Cut them off! <laughs> I feel like someone could have started running. Right? <laughs> Just oh, glued my feet to the floor again. Pack. Flash. <laughs> Did you need to be running oh, with that needle? This <laughs> way, Frisky. We lost. I guess hair doctor does like safety. safety. Yes, that's right. Now maybe. I feel like he's. Oh no! Come on, he's got to see something. No. Oh. I think he didn't become that goofy, weird guy until later yeah. on. You but he's right. there, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, like why would you I, have such a distinct? Binom design. Yeah, I guess if he had a voice at that point, he would definitely say something. Yeah, because that was a moment that could be used a lot. Yeah, it's some hilarious, weird, <laughs> creepy doctor thing. So anyway, yeah, we have, I would say, the moment at which Enzo is going to be dumping on the city limits and they're about to operate on Frisket is the last moment of any tension in this episode. Yeah. And from here on, it's just all about how much smarter sure little kids and dogs awful. are Something than super happen. viruses. <laughs> and every scene is about driving that point home. Yeah. Which I think was meant to be like a making kids feel empowered thing. And maybe for a certain age of kid that worked. Yeah. Maybe for a kid who perhaps related to Enzo, it worked seeing him stick it to where Megabyte. Where did they go? Yeah, I just, but, I'm wondering where those kids are who related to yeah, him. Yeah. I mean, maybe they, they must, there must have been Activate kids who did. Activate emergency lighting. But I, I don't know any of yeah, them. Yeah, okay, if you're I'll watching this and them. you have different feelings about Enzo overall now or this episode in particular <laughs> i personally really want to know yeah if you actually liked enzo please like no like on, like, i didn't but that doesn't he, mean and like katie and i are kind of a two-person hive mind like one yes. of the reasons we're friends is because we really tend to like and dislike the same stuff so uh -oh. because we head. both this think way. so by no means makes it universal yeah. In fact, we've been known to both like a thing that literally nobody else likes. Yeah. So. Which makes us special. Yeah, exactly. Look but it's true. Cool I would stuff. be curious to know if he did resonate with any. Yeah. Anyone. At all. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are watching and you did like Enzo, please. Yeah, please tell us. Or if you like this episode, tell yeah, us why. Yeah. What is it that works for you or worked for you when you were sort of uh, in the target market? <laughs> you guys are. And you do have to see a lot of smiling in their face for this whole episode. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, Enzo owned them there, he owned them here, like... I guess that's the thing, is they wanted to have a chance to show that Enzo was just was as capable. capable. Yeah. But again, like we were sort of discussing before we started recording, an episode that does that so, so much better is Enzo the Smart. Yes. You know, everything that that episode did not accomplish about Enzo, or that this episode does we not accomplish not what Enzo that episode now, does. And yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll get more of that. Yeah, but this, has, this like, just as you said, just basically shows that Megabyte is apparently not that smart or yeah. good at defending his own fortress. Like, right, yeah, that, I think that's what bugged me, is that, like, Megabyte is introduced to such a boss. Yeah. And yet this whole episode, he's just getting owned this by this little cool kid, problem. and you're just like, but... He's getting Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> he truly is, with none of the charm of Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Well, the people Again, probably no would argue. Jesse Moss. Jesse Moss, you did a great job. It's just sometimes the material you're given as an actor uh, is, is Yeah, not... and we're much more, yeah, it's yeah. much more the storyline. It's not yeah. like how the lines are delivered. Or yeah, exactly. Like it's just, yeah, just yeah. false flat. I, I feel really bad when people get up on kid actors because, like, when kid actors are bad, I feel like a lot of the time it's the director. Yeah. You know. And also, I mean, it's kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. No, and it, it's true. Thanks for saying that. It's, it, like, in no way are we saying that his, yeah, Jesse Moss is yeah. the one that he did a bad job. It's more just that 
the character himself doesn't quite yeah. hit the like mark. Like clearly written by a bunch of like grown adults who thought that this was what a nine-year-old <laughs> would be like. This was supposed to be like. Yeah. Okay, but that's a cool moment. Yeah, we do get to see some of how cool Megabyte. I think that just like you said, it's like Megabyte just doesn't want to have to do it himself. But then he's like, "Fine, I'll yeah. do it myself <laughs> and show you how awesome I am." Exactly. Shot. It's in. funny for as capable as Megabyte is. One thing the series seems to drive home over and over again is that he's not very good at hiring. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not a great management person. <laughs> I mean, Dot gets I so much better like results out of Hack and Slash than Megabyte does. <laughs> that's that's which, a good point. <laughs> which I guess is, I guess is suitable for an extremely selfish, self-interested virus bent on carving everything in his own image. Yeah. Like, that's poor management would be in keeping with that persona. I yeah, it makes sense. Underlings. And also, because then there would be no show if he was actually <laughs> capable. Hack. Slash. Oh, also, cool. like, it's a little while back, but there was a really weird shot where, where Megabyte was just kind of silhouetted in the background, or in the foreground, he was just kind of there. And it's, like, almost oh, no, like, ominous. Yeah. yeah it's also, <laughs> and, yeah, that's the two things that happen a lot in this episode. Um, Frisket tooting and hack and slash falling to pieces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of juvenile. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, there they go. They're gonna escape. Yeah. Because from way up there. Frisket, what are you waiting for? Ooh, Frisket. <laughs> and then the episode we just go. resolved right there. It ends in a pile of poo. Yep. Yep. Oh, but also I guess a heroin climb. But again, there's never a really... It's like, oh, he slips. Frisket! You don't really What's get much there? of a sense that... Think anything's gonna get in their way at this point. You can do it yeah, more it's, you know, just, just, it's true. They're like stakes, stakes. Just <laughs> you, jump. it's so true. Like it just never felt. <laughs> You're feeling better. Like there was anything really that bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this, this mega virus who is supposed. Well, I guess it's not a mega virus yet, but this virus who's supposed to be like a huge threat uh, can't stand up to a cheeky kid and his dog. Enzo, yeah. are you okay? But not his dog. Yeah, his we were coming friend. to save oh, yeah, dog. his friend who is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> From Megabyte, what happened? Oh, nothing. Me and good old Frisket here just kicked Megabyte's bitmap. That's all. Looks like we owe you one, oh, boy. Oh, kids. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, good dog. No, great dog. <laughs> Again, like it was supposed to be about Dudes. the bond between Enzo and Frisket, but that bond only came into play we should, we should yeah. when we they were taking Enzo yeah. away yeah. to dump him yeah. and Frisket yeah. escaped to right. save him or be reunited with him, and it never came into play in any way that really affected the suspense of the episode or drove the story. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. it kind of drove the story when he like had to escape to save him. Um, but yeah, like you, you really Someone feel like this was supposed that. to be about the bond and between a boy and his dog, and instead it turned out to be uh -oh. about a virus who can't hire competent people. <laughs> <laughs> this really should be an HR yeah like, training yeah, video. <laughs> Listen, guys, this is what happens. Yeah, and I guess Air Doctor didn't talk in the end. No. Yeah, and that maybe is the biggest disappointment. <laughs> Air Doctor. I, so I wonder when he does first get to talk. Yeah. All I remember is my digits. My digits. My digits. Yeah, yeah. The really important part. Because he's, he's in so many great episodes, it's easy to lose track of, of when he is and isn't there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah. But I love that he was there from the beginning, even though he may yeah, not have true, been the true Air dialogue. Doctor. Yeah, which yeah. sort of leads you to be like, wow, they created these binomes with this very interesting Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster type designs. And... Like, they clearly just, like, what was the motivation to, like, design these binomes mm -hmm. and, and drop them in there as opposed to making it, like, regular binomes operating the machine? And it also makes you think, like, how often they must come back to things that they created. Like, they did, cre like you said, they created these two very clearly distinct characters and then came back later and said, well, let's give them personalities and make them way more interesting and hilarious. Yeah. And it, like, it just shows that they really do... 
not just throw anything away. Yeah, yeah. And again, that was part of economizing with television, because especially with digital animation, something I do remember from my career working with a producer and sort of loosely tied to animation, um, is it's all about the assets. Uh, basically, you, with computer animation, you <laughs> produce digits. your assets, your digits, <laughs> and... Um, it, and then those become part of your database. And the more you can recycle, as, so like your assets can be anything from backgrounds to a character's arm, for example, an outfit, um, uh, a certain angle on a character if you're dealing with 2D flash animation, for example. And um, so you create this library of assets and the more you can reuse what you've already created, the more money you're saving. Right. Because that's course. a really expensive thing is creating new assets. So you know a really expensive show um, in animation if the characters change their clothing often or frequently change locations so new backgrounds have to be created. Mm -hmm. um, like Avatar The Last Airbender, for example. I, um, I, I was watching that show when I was working in the animation industry and like there's rumors about how expensive it was, but anyone who knows anything about animation can watch that show and tell you it was a really expensive show. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have definitely been a budget buster for sure. Um, but yeah, so they would have created an Air Doctor and then been like, yeah, we should find another use for this adorable binome we created because he's in our library. And it's all about we creativity stuff. and constraint. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Bring it home. Yep. Bring it home. Right back. Oh, to we're we're bringing episode. it to the last episode. <laughs> yeah. It was a better episode. Can well, we just this all is all the overall back. theme of the reboot review. In I case hate you to like give, be too hard in a, on an episode, but it's just because the show is so awesome. When they have an episode that falls flat like this one, it was just, it's it's hard not to knock it as hard much as we do. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and again, like I think it was an episode that had elements of good things it was going for. Um, but then was just maybe, yeah, it wasn't given the, I don't like, there's so much care that goes into every episode when you make a show, but, um, yeah, there was just, it's, it's like just they missed strong, it. They yeah, just they, missed, they missed the mark. It. That yeah. was it. Yeah, yeah, that was really it. So, yeah. you know, their imaginary imaginings of a nine year old boy and his antics with his dog. <laughs> yep. Is it like, That's, honestly, like, I, cause that was a theme of the nine of so many 90 shows, like yeah. a, the boy or sometimes girl the kid. and the sidekick yeah yeah or or stories about dogs outsmarting villains yeah being a thing <laughs> yes, in the 90s exactly. right i think it was the 90s when that was a thing or like the early 2000s but 90s grown-ups were very stupid <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and like stodgy and um so i think that was a thing too is um in the 90s watching it this premise felt really tired yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's it yeah just, we'd all seen this before yeah. and done much better um, yeah. Like you say, like Home Alone. <laughs> you <Yes>. know? Exactly. <laughs> oh my oh. God. Oh man, that's that's maybe my favorite thing to get out of this. Is there we go. Now, seeing this as the Macaulay Culkin episode. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's it. <laughs> and on that note, we should wrap this up. So, uh, yeah, I'm Robin. And I'm Katie. This is the Reboot Review. And until next time, stay frosty. And don't get kicked in the bitmap.